everyone for joining us. I hope you can all hear me okay. Uh, we're delighted to have um, our actually third meeting of our Mahara user group today. And uh, Mug at this point is six months old. And uh, for those of you who are new to us, welcome. Uh, we've been so pleased to have these meetings and have connections on Facebook and, and at conferences and, and we're looking for more collaborations to follow. And today um, we have a special treat because we have uh, a guest speaker, Christina Hoffner, um, joining us, who I will introduce in one moment. Uh, but first, I do want to thank uh, Keith Landa from SUNY Purchase for setting up the whole technical end of this meeting. Um, he did a lot of legwork ahead of time to get everything in working order, so uh, thanks, Keith, for that. And also want to thank um, Sam Egan, uh, who most of you know, she does all the communications and helps to keep us all on track. Um, we couldn't do this without her. Um, so with that, uh, I will go ahead and introduce Christina Hoffner, uh, who is the e-learning specialist at Catalyst. Some of you may know her. She lives in New Zealand, and she works with the Mahara development team at Catalyst IT, the largest independent open source technology specialist in Australasia. She can often be found online answering questions in the Mahara community forums and supporting users. She also gives support on myportfolio.school.nz a Mahara instance that has already over 900 New Zealand schools connected. And I just want to add on a personal note, Christina has been delightfully helpful to me and others um, in our adoption of Mahara. And we look forward to learning more from her today and continuing to work with her and meet in person this summer uh, at ABLE and uh, perhaps at meetings beyond. So with that, I will turn it over to Christina, unless there are any other questions from the group. Feel free to use the chat, everyone, um, to ask questions. I know from speaking to Christina, uh, she does enjoy questions. So I think um, you should feel free to keep the back channel open and keep posing questions um, as she is speaking. Thank you very much for your introduction, Beth. Um, and welcome to all of you from around the world who have joined in. Um, I know some of you who are on the participant list, and so it's great to see the names now often, or at least virtually in person, synchronously, and not just on the forum. Um, what I want to talk to you about uh, today briefly is uh, what is coming up in Mahara 1.5, because that um, I think is on the interest radar of everybody. And um, so I'm going to talk about that a little bit, but also give you some ideas of how you can uh, join Mahara and become more involved in the development of it or in supporting the software. Because it is an open source software, so it is also a community project, and it's not just Catalyst IT developing on it, but also people around the world. And we'll also hear today from um, our, one of our biggest uh, plugin developers, Gregor, who will um, introduce you to some of his work that he's done over the last month. But let's get started with what is actually in store for Mahara 1.5? Um, just a brief overview because we are often asked how many people are actually using Mahara these days. And I looked at our statistics of all the registered sites and registered users. And there we've got 290 from around the world, primarily schools and universities. And altogether, there are around uh, 440,000 users. That usually differs a little bit uh, from when you look at the statistics, depending on the week, because maybe some sites don't report anything at the moment or have gone offline for a bit and then get back online. But uh, there are many, many more users actually using Mahara because it uh, is not necessary that you register your site with the community, and therefore we have no idea how many uh, Mahara instances are actually out there. If you um, have influence over your Mahara instance and uh, have access to the site administration and haven't done so yet, uh, please also register so that you will also show up in our statistics then. Um, last year in June, we released Mahara 1.4. And um, already before Mahara 1.4 was released, we started work on version 1.5. But since the release of 1.4, that work has been 
intensified quite a bit. And um, what we have planned is uh, to release Mahara 1.5 within the first half of 2012. So that's our target date or target time frame. And uh, most likely in the next developer meeting, which will be on January 31st um, for everybody in the Northern Hemisphere, and probably already a little bit on the first for, uh, for the state, is that we will discuss more about the, the state and when we want to have a feature free so that everybody can then work towards the date and afterwards get into testing of 1.5 so that we can um, get the release out hopefully before the first six months of 2012 are over. So what have we actually changed in 1.5? Uh, so far there are already 78 new features and Dominic Alain was uh, very kind to actually type them all on Launchpad so that we always have a very quick overview what is actually coming in the next release. And um, all these features can be grouped in a number of categories. Because there are so many features, I'm not going through all of them, but I'd uh, rather look at these uh, categories here and then maybe mention one or two of the changes that we've made. So um, starting with usability, there have been a number of theme changes made so that the um, page editor is uh, more concise, takes up uh, less space. Um, we also have new icons that are currently being finalized. And um, we will also be able to make the microfolio primary school theme that we developed for our New Zealand instance available um, for the entire community so that you can also see how it can look quite different uh, when you're especially on your dashboard. We've also made a number of security improvements um, that can mainly not really be seen too much from the user end, but are very important for, um, for the administration of it and for server security. And in the admin section, there's also been added a number of items that have to do in a lot or have to do a lot of times with multi-tenancy. So when you have many institutions connected in one Mahara instance, and um, that means that uh, now institution administrators often have more control over some of the settings uh, in their institution. So they can, for example, decide whether um, Profile pages shall only be shared with the institution or with the entire site. Then um, we also have a screen where institution and administrators and staff members are listed so that these can be contacted more easily. We've also made a few changes on the content side, so on the artifact side. Um, for example, so that you can now upload multiple files uh, by simply selecting them and you don't have to um, use, uh, I have to put them into a zip file anymore. In terms of interoperability, the Moodle plugin for the assignment submission has been updated, but more importantly also is that um, for the New Zealand Ministry of Education, we've been working on an LMS micro or microfolio and in that case also MADA, um, interoperability allowing uh, web um, having a web services stack that um, allows you to already provision accounts directly from your LMS into Mahara and we are currently working on sending notifications across and the future plan is also to send content. That is currently still a plugin but it can be used with uh, 1.5 and um, it's just uh, in development. Um, somebody uh, in terms of block type, um, there has also been some, some enhancements made. And um, as I already said, in, in terms of theming, our designer has made um, changes so that it looks a bit more modern and we will have another theme included that um, can be uh, it's very much geared towards younger users. In terms of the group functionality and collaboration, um, we've made an entire rewrite of the groups so that they are more flexible and um, can be used 
also, for example, for assessment groups or for appraisal groups, when you don't want to know who or when you don't want to show who the members of the groups are, and um, we yeah, just change the entire framework there. In regards to authentication, this very recently we finished um, the implementation of browser IDs, which means that um, you can log into Mahara with an email address and um, you don't have to have a password in Mahara anymore, but it goes to Mozilla Browser ID, verifies you and then logs you in. So that is um, also a quite a good security measure for making sure that um, logins on and passwords, for example, can be tried out. But then also we can make authentication much easier in future because you won't have to worry about a single sign-on or LDAP connection, but could use browser ID. And a lot of these features, um, quite a number of the big features have actually been sponsored by the New Zealand Ministry of Education, who have the huge microfolio.school.nz um, Mahara instance. And um, they have been very active in allowing us also to put all these features back into Core Mahara which um, is very nice because that way we can grow features there. We've also made quite a number of bug fixes that um, usually already go into 1.4. And for English, um, we have also been done going through the language strings to um, correct some of the mistakes in there. And these will be um, uploaded as soon as we have um, a way of making it easy also for translators so that they don't have to go everything because their translations might actually be correct. If, now, if you want to try out all these features, you're very welcome to connect to master.dev.mahara.org. You will have to register with an account and there you can look at a number of these features and um, test them yourself. Or if you want to download your own version, you can also always get the latest developer snapshot or get your code in Git and install it on your computer. Now to the second topic of my presentation, how can you actually get involved in the community? Because I know a lot of you are present in the forums, ask questions, um, a number of you also already answered questions, uh, and there are many, many more ways to get involved. So you can become a core developer, you can be a bug squasher, or you can, um, like Dajan did, um, for example, tag bugs or feature requests on Launchpad so that um, everything is better organized. Then Dajan is also one of our um, main translators. He's the translator for French. And Gregor and Dajan, he's the Slovenian translator. So translations are also very important. Um, you can also participate in reviewing features that are going to uh, become part of Mahara or reviewing bugs in our review system, which will help uh, developers because then before they put anything in there, we, we know that more people actually tested it on their computers in different browsers and so on. Um, furthermore, you can also participate in writing the documentation, so the, the user manual, and improve things there. And uh, for Mahara 1.4, the manual can currently be found at um, manual.mahara.org. I still have a few things to add there, especially in the administration area and for feedback, but I hope that once I'm done with that, I can go on to uh, documenting everything for 1.5. And as, as I said, if you want to join it, please let me know, send me an email or um, send a message on mahara.org and we can talk about your involvement there. We are also looking into um, how to make it easy for translators to actually translate the manual because the software that we are using allows for translations via Launchpad. So that is also something that is on our to-do list. And once you contribute to the project, um, you will also show up in the contributors. So here we have the latest screen grab from um, Olo, which um, we have connected to Mahara to actually show what activity has been going on since the project started. And here we have the recently active members. And you see a number of the names that are very familiar to you. 
and all developers that I'm um, also listed there because we have the menus also in the Git repository and so everything is tracked. So even if you're not a developer, you can um, help with the project development and uh, can bring the project forward and you're also given credit then. And then of course way at the bottom, which might then change at some time, your name can appear there in the future as well. So, if we look through our keyhole to Mahara, it looks pretty good, I think, so far already, because we have a whole new host of new features available in 1.5 that you can already test now. Um, bug fixes and uh, features don't necessarily have to be very big ones, but they can also be just something small. Not everything has to take a number of hours to finish, but sometimes things can be done in a very quick way. That's why we also have bug tags as byte points on Launchpad, so that if you're very new to the development and you want to test things out first, but don't really want to take on a huge project, you could start with smaller bugs and participate that way. Now, if you have any questions, please head over to mahara.org. If you don't already have an account, register there and join in the discussions, either in the pedagogy forums, the support forums, or the developer forums. Ask your questions and then I suppose at one point you'll also join in uh, providing answers to all the community users. And if you want to get in touch with me directly, you can do so via email or via Twitter, or also on sending a message uh, to me on mahara.org. So I'm very happy to take any questions now, or if there's no time at the moment, um, talk to you later. Thank you. Uh, Christine, this is Keith. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. So uh, that, that, that was very nice. I was just uh, wondering, I mean, I'm more familiar with Moodle. Uh, we're just now getting into Mahara. Um, I, obviously, I don't think Mahara is quite as, as large a developer community as, as Moodle. But how else would you compare them in terms of, of organization and how people get involved in, in work in the Mahara community compared to, to Moodle? Mm -hmm. um, it is true that the Mahara community is uh, much smaller than the Moodle one. And, uh, but we do have, I think at least, well, Catalyst lead developer um, Lund in, uh, the, in the UK, they also do quite a bit of development work. And then also other Mahara partners um, um, provide development services. And if you look at the, uh, let's just get the URL. If you look at the partners page, there you can then check out who's actually doing what in the community. But um, a lot of times, especially on the form, it is um, individuals who also provide feedback. And um, there we are trying to grow the community by always encouraging everybody to join in so that it is not just the very few people whose names you see in the forums, but that also others uh, give feedback and um, ask questions, answer questions, um, do development work. And I think over the last few months, we've seen a bit of a growth in there. So we've also had um, mentions of plugin development by developers who haven't made them uh, publicly available yet all the time, but are working on it. And so that is really, really nice to see that the community is growing, though it is very slow growing, but nevertheless, um, it is growing in a bit. The um, partner program is uh, quite different, or is, is somewhat different from the Moodle one. Oops. And uh, there are few partners than Moodle, and we also, uh, or the um, governance board also has a different um, model of how the partners work. And so we do not really have uh, a huge budget at Mahara.org for improvements, for, um, yeah, for new features to develop, but they usually require some funding from the user community, so from institutions like schools or universities, um, because we usually 
don't, um, don't have the capacity to do that from the, the project headquarters office. Good. Uh, John, your question in regard to how was that number determined for the 440,000 users? Um, that is all. These are the users that are sent anonymously via the statistics when you register with Mahara.org. There are a number of um, deaths are just sent over, and so we know that it's about 290 institutions with currently 440,000 users. But that is only for the instances that actually re register, and I suspect that the majority of Mara instances aren't registered. And the users is that uh, the actual users that have accounts on the respective Mahara instances. Mm -hmm. uh, Kevin, I, I see you raised your hand. I enabled audio for you. If you uh, have a microphone, you want to ask a question or. No, I get, maybe it was by accident. Okay. Uh, yes, Ellen. Uh, my portfolio that's for that in bed uh, counts as one instance, and that is a then so called multi tenanted instance where we have just one installation of Mahara and we use the institutions feature in there in order to distinguish the individual schools. So currently there are approximately 950 schools connected and we have 45,000 accounts there. And that is for all the, uh, so all the schools in New Zealand, um, so K, um, grade one through grade 13 can connect to that instance and can use it for free because the Ministry of Education is handling it. Maybe we should move on so that the Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you, Christina. Um, I guess, Ellen, um, shall we, we should probably go to your presentation next then, okay? Okay, can you hear me okay? Yep, you're coming through to me. Okay. Let me get your... Okay, so my first slide actually has an error on it, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I put it together really fast, and um, so um, so I was going to talk about the um, various plugins that are available in Mahara 1.4, and um, the first four slides are actually um, views of the blocks that you can drag into a page, and um, so the first. Um, thing is on the external content, um, in the external content area, there's the Embedly block um, that's possible to add into a page. Google Apps became um, part of Mahara 1.4. It used to be an add-on, but now it's um, part of Mahara um, out of the box. And the second one uh, is on the tab for files, images, and videos. There's an add-on called FreeMind Flash um, that I've um, installed on, on my Mahara server. And um, FreeMind Flash, um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with it, but it's a mind, FreeMind is a mind mapping tool um, that you can download from SourceForge and build mind maps. You can upload those files to Mahara, and the plugin, the FreeMind Flash plugin, will display your mind maps in your page. And then on the General tab, um, I've added the plugins Add This CPD, which is um, your professional development. It's a, a field which I'll show. Um, LinkedIn. Um, to share your LinkedIn account, uh, Twitter tweet, and a Facebook like. And on the profile tab, um, 
I've added learning styles, multiple intelligences, and the LinkedIn profile plugin. So I'm going to show you um, some of these. And I also want to tell you that um, I am not by any stretch of the imagination um, a, a person who took uh, computer science courses and, and is therefore a network or system admin. However, um, I have followed the instructions on the Mahara.org site. I've installed my own Mahara system um, and I've upgraded it successfully a, a few times. I've installed these plugins myself and themes and I don't have any problems. So if I can do it, um, Probably anybody can. <laughs> so just so that you know, it's extremely easy to install these these plugins. There's nothing to it. Um, so the first thing I thought I'd show you is the continuing professional development plugin and how it actually works. So once you install it, you'll see that on the content tab in your portfolio, where you have the links for your profile and your profile pages and your resume and your journals, a link will be added to the to, labeled CPD. And when you click on that link, you're taken to a page that looks similar to this. Now, I've created two examples of um, professional development. If I wanted to create a new one, I could click the button they have the arrow pointing to that says New CPD. But instead, what I thought I would do is show you what it looks like for example, in the conferences, in, in the CPD that I've labeled conferences. So if I were to click the little um, icon in the middle there that would take me into that, you'd see that um, I have added a number of them. And what's really nice about this is that it allows you to put in the number of hours you spent. And this is particularly helpful for um, K-12 teachers who have to keep track of um, their professional development hours or fields like nursing, um, things like that. And it keeps track of the total hours. If you needed to add a new activity, you would just select the new activity button and there would be a number of fields that you could um, fill in and then they would display like this. So this is what it looks like in my portfolio before I share it with anyone. Um, another um, add-on that appears on the content tab is the My Learning. So I installed the My Learning plugin. It's actually a block plugin and um, an activity plugin. That's not what it's called, but I've been working in Moodle 2 for <laughs> days here. And, um, and so it will create some blocks, which we'll look at in a second in when you're building pages, but it also creates this additional link on the content tab called My Learning. And when you click on My Learning, you come to a page. At the top of the page are questions that it asks you regarding your um, preferences for learning. And for example, um, one of these says, I often serve as a leader among peers and colleagues. And then if that's the case, you would put a check. And if it's not, you wouldn't put a check. And below that is learning styles um, questions. Um, and the first one here says, I understand something more easily when I talk about it with other people. And then you would have the option to either select often, always, never, sometimes, um, and, and take that um, assessment also. So this is what those two plugins look like when you display them in a page. So to the left, is what the CPD looks like. And it looks similar to other fields that you find, for example, in my resume. And um, the links under the title, they're actually links in the title column. And when you would click it, it will expand and show what you've written about that particular conference or activity. It keeps the hours there and shows the total hours. To the right of that is the learning styles. So when you pull the learning styles block, into your page. Um, what displays is this really nice visual um, that shows your preferred learning styles. And to the right of that is um, multiple intelligences and how that looks when you pull that into a page. Um, and so when you first drag the learning styles block into the page, you're actually given a few options. So as you notice on that slide, it was a pie chart. 
And you can actually change the colors that display in that pie chart. So if you don't really like um, you know, these, this color blue or green or, or red, you can use um, the color um, RGB color codes, the hexadecimal system, to type in the color codes that you would like and change the colors. You, you can also opt to have your legend in numbers instead of letters. Same thing with multiple intelligences. Um, that had one color in the graph, and you could change that color from the light blue that it was to your preferred color. And you can also choose to have the legend in either letters or numbers. And moving on, um, one of the things that you might have noticed on that slide was some common icons that appear in pages. That's the Add This block. You click and drag into your page, and when you do, you have all of these options um, that you can um, add the add this um, items into your page, and um, you can choose large icons or just the share button. Um, I, I think this is really a nice nice feature. Um, there's also some other plugins, the Facebook like which I'll show you an example of what it looks like in a page. But when you drag the Facebook like block into your page, these are the kind of configurations that you can choose. Um, you can, you can um, change the verb, for example, to display or um, like or recommend. You could use a dark color scheme or a light color scheme. And you can also show where you want it to display in the column that you drag it to, so either to the far left, the center, or the right. And this is what the Facebook Like button will look like when you add it. It's over there on the left. Below that is the Twitter Tweet button. Um, both of these can display numbers, too, that will show how many people have liked it or tweeted it, but you don't, you don't have to have that display. Um, and the Twitter Tweet button um, works very similar to the Facebook Like button in that you drag it into your page, select a few of the cons um, configurations, and it will display on your page. Um, so I'm going to stop here because it looks like there's a couple of questions. Um, are there are these learning style multiple intelligence plugins more for personal use and reflection rather than for public sharing? Um, I would say yes. I think it's. Um, when we've used it, used them in with students, they they do use them for reflecting on their learning. So they might put an artifact into their portfolio and reflect on that artifact and include a reflection on how this applies to their learning styles or or their multiple intelligence. So I would say yes. Although we've had some students who put it right on their profile page for everybody to see. Um, because it says something about who they are. So if they're an artist, for example, they might display their multiple intelligence um, graph to show that um, their artistic um, bent, kind of. So you know, I think it depends on, on the individual, um, what they choose to, to share. But I think it's primarily meant for that. But students do often display it on their profile. OK, so moving on, um, I wanted to talk about the LinkedIn plugin, which um, is, is a really nice plugin. Um, so the first thing is that to, one of the things that you'll need for your LinkedIn to display your LinkedIn page within your Mahara page is to go to your LinkedIn account and get your public profile address. If you just go to your LinkedIn account and copy the URL, you might not actually be at the public um, URL. So the best thing to do is to go to your LinkedIn account and look for this little um, line that says public profile and copy that URL, or click on that link and then copy the URL. And then when you drag the LinkedIn profile block into your page, you're going to need to paste that link into the area that says enter your public profile URL. Now, you'll see that there's a couple options here. And, and Gregor says that you can customize your LinkedIn public profile URL, which is great. <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, I'm not a big LinkedIn user, although I have a LinkedIn account and um, do 
post the forums occasionally. I'll have to check that out. Um, so where it says profile style, I'm going to show you an example of both. You can either pick the public profile summary or the full public profile, and I'll show you an example of both of those. And then you can choose how you want it to display. So this is an example of the summary. And this is an example of the of the entire thing. Now what, what you can't see here is this is a scrolling page. I mean there's a lot of information. So it starts with this and then below that goes the whole summary um, that appears on my LinkedIn page. So it actually does pull in your full profile. There's also a LinkedIn share button that you can add to page to a page. This is a different block and when you drag it in it configures similarly to the Facebook like and the um, Twitter tweet and it, and it looks like this. Um, then I was going to talk about a couple of themes that I installed, um, just show them to you, but um, I think Gregor is going to be talking about skins, so all, I, all I'm going to do is just show you a couple of the themes that I've installed and what they look like. Um, so this is a zebra theme. Um, it's gray and it's kind of nice. Um, this is the orange theme, which um, I'm hoping that um, Empire State College, which is going with Mahara and Moodle, don't force us to use because orange is our color, but I like a lot of the other themes. So I hope they don't, you know, tell us we can only use the orange theme. And um, there's an, a nifty little theme called the Unity theme. And, and what the um, developer tried to do here was um, a lot of people complain about the size of the blocks when you're working in edit mode and how your page is below that and so you have to keep scrolling down. So um, this thing pulls the blocks out to the left in a menu style and then you can access them that way and the Unity theme looks like that. So um, that's that's um, my presentation. Um, I encourage you to um, try the plugins. They're really, really wonderful. And I hope um, those of you who know um, CSS um, will write some themes, because I like to use lots of different kinds of themes. Um, so I'll take, take any other questions that anyone has. OK, so I guess um, back to Keith. Okay, thanks, Ellen. Um, that's useful. I mean, we have just a very plain vanilla uh, Mahara 1.4 ourselves, and uh, whereas with Moodle we have not only installed community um, developed blocks and activities, uh, and even developed some on Mahara, we really are just now getting started. So it's nice to know what's what's available there. So, um, Beth, did you want Gregor to show some of his work, or do you want to talk about the ABLE proposal? Yeah, no, uh, that would be great. Um, first of all, thank you so much, Christina and Ellen. That was very interesting information that you both shared. And why don't we hear from Gregor, and um, we'll go on to ABLE after that. Hi, guys. Hey, Gregor. Okay, I hope you can see this. It's coming up. Um, this is okay. It's coming up. I'll wait a second or two. I hope you can see it now. Yes. Okay. Um, this is the expansion of skin feature. Skin feature is almost completed, um, but uh, but Mike Mike Kelly. Um, in our conversation mentioned, it would be great to have a dynamic live preview of, of skin creation when a user creates skin. So this is, bear with me, this is work in progress just to show you how it will look like. So if I want, this is the preview of a, of a page. And if I want to create a skin, for example, I want to change the body color, I click here and it instantly changes. And the page color, like 
like this. Uh, the, the images, background images aren't uh, working in live preview yet. So we move on to header. This looks like something like that. And we can also change the text and the links, of course. Underline and let's see, we have a blue also underlined link. Okay. The size of the text, the color of the text, like this. Uh, the color of the headings, and no, like this. And emphasized color, like, I don't know, like something like, oh, let me switch to something else, like this. And also other options, and I'm planning to add uh, the advanced tab so the, the, the advanced users could could uh, write their own custom CSS, uh, which will um, serve to more uh, for more advanced customizations. Skins look like this. This is preview, and one can. This is the old form. One can uh, change or edit the skin, and uh, the administrators also had has the options to. I hope it will go there to to add um, custom fonts. I wanted to show it if it will work. Let me let me wait for a minute or so. Hmm. In between, let's look at the LinkedIn profile Elm was talking about. And I want to show the scrolling thing about full public profile. And here it is my customized public LinkedIn profile. It looks like, like this. Oh, it isn't working. Never mind. That is all from me. I wanted to show the the custom fonts, but apparently it's not working right now. So I'll stop here. And uh, if anybody has a question, I would be glad to answer it. Yeah, I just wanted to follow up on Kevin's comment in the chat that um, I mean one of the things we dealt with or well haven't really dealt with yet at purchase is that you know um, we have a very strong um, arts component to the curriculum in the programs here and so you know the ability to have a, a wider variety of themes and skins and to have the ability to create portfolios that maybe look a little bit more artistic than what uh, Mahara has out of the box will, I think, eventually down the road be very important for us. So uh, this is uh, interesting developments, I think. So, uh, Beth, do we have any more uh, presentations, um, or sh did you want to talk about the ABLE proposal? Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, don't know, I think um, given the time, it might make sense to move to our ABLE talk, uh, as well as um, talking about our next meeting. Um, first with ABLE, uh, I don't know how many of you are planning on attending ABLE. Maybe there's a hand raise feature here. Maybe we could just use that for a second just to people could 
give a show of hands to see if you're planning on attending ABLE, uh, which is the annual International ePortfolio Conference in Boston. I see a few of our presenters are, attend are going to be attending. Um, anyway, whether you're attending or not, we, we would like to submit a proposal on behalf of this mug group, and we'd like to have as, many, uh, as much input as possible from the group, uh, and ideally have a panel, uh, which could include some virtual presentations as well. I'm sure we'd be open to that. I'm sure Abel would be open to that. So I don't know if anyone wants to jump in or participate in the chat with any preliminary ideas for things we might share as a group. And I, if it's hard to do this kind of brainstorming right here and now, what we might suggest is if everyone could take time after this meeting to post some ideas in Facebook um, for proposal topics. And um, Sam and I are more than happy to generate a draft proposal. I think the deadline is the beginning of February, though, so time is short. Um, what we could do would be to outline a proposal uh, on behalf of this group and offer some type of panel presentation and then try to uh, uh, seek volunteers or nominations for panelists. I don't know if anyone here in this group would like to be part of that panel or contribute in some way. Yeah, and Sam's noting that she posted the proposal application in the Facebook group. Okay, and again, it may be hard to generate ideas here, but we're really excited about the collaborations happening here and think others would benefit from this talk as well. Uh, so just know that that's on our minds and we'll be drafting a proposal and we'd be happy to have uh, any and all of you be a part of it um, in any way you can be. So I don't see, I don't see any other questions about this, so I, a few people are typing. But since we're running out of time, oh Ellen, yep, it would be great to talk about the support for open source ePortfolio. Definitely. Ellen, I assume that means you're volunteering. And Christina, uh, I'm not sure what type of session we are going for. Sam, maybe, I don't know if you can type in if you knew which. I know there are different formats. We thought some type of panel would be most interesting uh, to, to give a variety of voices to this kind of work that we've been doing, which although it's focused on Mahara, is certainly also about just using ePortfolios effectively. So that's too, I think we mentioned a panel discussion. Okay, so please join us um, somewhat quickly if you can, just because our proposal is due. Uh, but then even after we submit, assuming it is accepted, we'd be looking for contributions from this group. Yeah, thanks, th thanks, Keith. I think so, too. Uh, so with that, um, you can certainly keep generating ideas, but perhaps we should turn it over to Garrett, who wants to talk about ideas for our next meeting. Garrett? Hi. Hey Garrett. Hey Garrett. Hi. Um, well, hello everyone. I'm Garrett. I'm from uh, Albertus Magnus College in New Haven, Connecticut. And uh, I'm primarily a teacher. And along with two other folks, I uh, teach uh, an ePortfolio class for everyone. And they've been such guinea pigs. <laughs> and uh, they've been dealing with us very well in all of our uh, experiments with Mahara, we're currently using 1.4. And what we're going to start to do this semester is have them integrate all of the general education outcomes into a video project. So for example, uh, we have general education outcomes like uh, written communication, oral communication, uh, quantitative thinking, and so forth. And they're going to put this all together into a movie somehow. and I was thinking that, at, of course, at the end of the semester, I want to share this with all of you folks um, in, in uh, mug meetings and on the Facebook page. But also, if we could do that for each other, too, I think it would be really helpful, not only in our future meetings, but also on the Facebook page as kind of objects that we can share with one another. Because it's one thing to kind of talk about how the pages look at each of our institutions, but when we hear students with passion in their voices kind of narrate through their pages, it becomes something different. 
And we all know that they're so crafty, and they come up with ways around issues that, you know, we normally don't. <laughs> and uh, I think that's a valuable thing to see and to hear from them. So what I'd like to suggest is um, if you – I just put a link for a popular screen capture tool into our chat box. And if you would consider using this tool, um, like Jing, um, for capturing some of the students, perhaps kind of pull aside a willing student and uh, make some of these uh, videos kind of narrating over their ePortfolio pages, I think it would be really valuable for us in our future meetings. So uh, I'd like you to consider that. Thank you. Thanks, Garrett. I think it's a great idea. It's like digital storytelling using ePortfolios. And um, I, I think it's a terrific idea. Um, we have a student showcase at PACE uh, in, at the end of the semester, but I think it will be so um, uh, powerful and we'd learn a whole lot from seeing um, this type of gallery, as Ellen says, or these digital stories. And I like the idea of using Jing. I think we initially thought about having the students, but it may be really tough to coordinate. Uh, but if they can do these uh, recordings ahead of time, I think it would be wonderful. Um, I think we were asking for ideas about dates. Oh, and Keith had posted um, a doodle link for everyone to kind of weigh in on April meeting dates. And we were hoping the end of the semester might work best for everybody. And we'd like to have a meeting run just like this, but with those student samples. Thanks, Keith. Great. Does anyone else have any ideas to share? Well, to, um, to, to look at potential times. I've basically looked at the last weekend, uh, the last week in April, and have posted a variety of late afternoon Eastern Standard Time times for people to vote on because those would be early morning times in New Zealand and hopefully we can continue to you know to develop this um, more global kind of of, cooper of collaboration here so month of January shouldn't be whoa no, that should be the last week in April. Let me um, let me edit that, and I'll, I'll um, send I'll send this uh, link. Also, uh, publicize it in the Mahara user group uh, in Facebook. Um, let me edit the poll right now. Yes, we can do that. And I should have the doodle poll edited in the next five minutes. <laughs> okay. Thanks. <laughs> thanks again. Take care, everyone. Um, thanks yeah, thanks everyone, for thanks, everyone for shopping. Um, Beth, I actually have a question. Um, this is not my question, for, but uh, Dajan from Minikalan uh, from uh, Oh, he's our French translator and also uh, lives in Switzerland. And he, he was actually one, uh, he's organizing a Mahara Mahara's Mood in June this year. And oh. um, oh. since we don't yet have a conference, he was wondering about 
um, what these uh, things could be called. So I just pasted quite quickly what he had sent me in the email yesterday because unfortunately we just had to um, run off at the moment. And um, yeah, we wanted to take the opportunity just to, to pick the grades and not necessarily the staff name right now, but I uh, will also make a forum post um, on mahara.org so that um, a name could be Incidentally, had already suggested a to look at potential times. I've basically looked at the last weekend, uh, the last week in April, and have posted a variety of late afternoon Eastern Standard Time times for people to vote on because those would be early morning times in New Zealand and hopefully we can continue to you know to develop this um, more global kind of of, co of collaboration here so month of January shouldn't be on the mahar.org site but I've also given everyone my email address so you have Whoa! No, that should be the last week in April. Let me um, let me edit that, and I'll I'll um, send I'll send this uh, link. Also, uh, publicize it in the Mahara user group uh, in Facebook. Um, let me edit the poll right now. Not you and I, but about this topic later this afternoon. So. But we're certainly open to any naming. Maybe we can include Keith in that too. So we could talk about this offline or through Facebook. Okay. Thanks again, everyone. Take care.